Our journey by sea to Iceland began when we embarked on our cruise ship at Southampton. It took us to ports in Norway and the Shetland Isles before heading northwest to Iceland. The sea was calm and conditions fair as we sailed out of the estuary towards the Solent on this fine September afternoon. By the evening, we were heading east along the English Channel, and by the following day we were crossing the North Sea, where we experienced some interesting sea conditions. On our first day, we began by visiting Fingvilleir National Park, which is about 30 miles from Reykjavik, and is on what is known as the Golden Circle. When Viking settlers arrived here in the 10th century, it was the site they chose for their parliament. Next, we visited the Geysir Hot Spring area. It is imperative to keep to the paths in this area, as in some places there is only a thin crust of earth covering a pool of boiling water. Boiling mud pits, exploding geysers, and the lively Strucker geyser, which spouts water 100 feet into the air every few minutes. Now, that is usually about every eight minutes, but watch this. A double spouting, a rare event, and I was lucky enough to have captured it on video. From Gezir, we then traveled to the breathtaking Gulf Foss, which means golden waterfalls. Upon returning to Reykjavik, we visited the Perlan, which is a museum that showcases the wonders of Iceland and has an observation deck with views over Reykjavik and its surroundings. We spent the second day exploring Reykjavik, and our first destination was the cathedral, called Hallgrimskirkja, which is named after a 17th century Icelandic poet and is the tallest building in Reykjavik. His design was inspired by the shapes and forms created when lava cools. Construction began in 1935 and it was completed in 1986. The massive German organ has 5,275 pipes 
and weighs an astonishing 25 tonnes. Fine views can be had from the church tower, including of the airport. There are some interestingly styled older buildings here in Reykjavik. Our ship departed Reykjavik in the evening to travel overnight to Akureyri, our second port of call in Iceland. The following morning, our ship crossed still waters and passed misty mountains as we entered the port of Akureyri. From there, we travelled by coach through some colourful scenery to beautiful Lake Myvatan. Then, a short journey from here brought us to Havira, where we saw some fascinating fumaroles and bubbling mud pools. Again, for our safety, we had to keep to the designated paths. We were also told that on some days the air can be sulphurous, but we were lucky on our sunny day. Our next stop was at Dimabogia lava fields. These volcanic rock formations are reminiscent of an ancient collapsed citadel.
After that, we visit Skudustadir, a tranquil area of lakes and pseudo craters. Pseudo craters are not formed by volcanic action, but by steam explosions as molten lava flows across wet surfaces. The wool of these Icelandic sheep is particularly thick and warm. Finally, Godafoss, which means waterfall of the gods. Legend has it that a thousand years ago, an Icelandic chieftain threw statues of the Norse gods into the water to demonstrate their conversion to Christianity. Iceland is a fascinating country and a geologist's dream. <laughs> 